Am I in frame? Do I look great? You're here with the Mouse Vibes, and we're back at Universal Studios Hollywood. We've seen the stars and rode the movies. Ridden the movies? I don't know if that makes sense. That makes sense, right? Where you can see the stars and ride the movie. So today I'm going to share secrets around Universal Studios that I guarantee you've never heard. It'll be our little secret. Well, we don't have to go too far for our very first secret here at Universal Studios Hollywood. It's actually right here at the very front entrance. It's the red carpet. Did you know that Universal Studios Hollywood is the only Universal park that rolls out the red carpet for its guests? Is this true? I read about it in a book. <laughs> and the reason is, you're the star of this adventure. You're making your red carpet debut into Hollywood. You're gonna be a star. Oh, this is some X-Files stuff right here. While the origins of the red carpet date back to ancient Greece, Imperial China, and even the Renaissance, it wasn't until 1922 when theater legend Sid Grauman rolled out the red carpet for the very first Hollywood premiere, Robin Hood at the New Egyptian Theater. This is true Hollywood history, and it's located just three and a half miles away from Universal Studios. If you haven't been, it's definitely worth checking out on your next visit. Well, I didn't know all that, so I'm sorry. So once you walk the red carpet and go through the turnstile, you're immediately greeted to the entertainment capital of LA with this massive bronze filmmaker statue. And the idea here is that you're the star. You know what? I'm the biggest star here, man. That's the way it is. And the director's getting you framed up for your Hollywood close-up. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Demir. Okay, we love red carpets, and now that we're a celebrity here, the first bit of storytelling takes place right when you enter the park. And I know it probably goes unnoticed to the untrained eye, but I'm an expert in theme parks, and I went to theme park college. That's right, to Santa Monica City College. I went where I went, Jason. And that's why I know so much about uh, absolutely nothing, except for a video like right now where it's the secrets of Universal, I know a lot. Perfect. Nerd alert! So the first bit of storytelling takes place right when you enter the park. And not only are you walking in the footsteps of Carl Lemley, the founder and creator of Universal Studios, this is going to be 1920s Hollywood, and the first Easter egg right when you enter the park is going to be over here right behind Marilyn Monroe. You, honey? you look great! Oh, thank you so much. I've never seen you out before. Really? I'm here every day. I have the worst timing ever, obviously. <laughs> There's a lot kind of happening in this photo off for Marilyn Monroe. Let me explain. And while Marilyn is definitely a legend, the two Easter eggs are actually right behind her photo op. The first one's a little bit more obvious. It's on the window right here where it reads Jack Pierce Makeup Studio. This is a nod to legendary monster maker Jack Pierce, who is also the head of Universal's makeup department from 1928 to 1947. And he's also credited with creating and designing some of horror films' most legendary characters, like Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Bride of Frankenstein, and The Wolfman. His design are so influential they're still used to this day. This is a great touch for us horror fans. He's good. <laughs> the other easter egg is definitely a little bit more obscure. It's for the sign reading established in 1925, which is one of three easter eggs for founder and creator Carl Lemley. It's not to be mistaken with the year that Universal Pictures opened, which was 1915, but 1925 is when Universal rolled out its fourth logo, dubbed the Carl Lemley Globe, the almost invisible globe, the cheesy globe, the eerie organ face and creepy Carl. Carl was ahead of his time because the Universal logo doesn't look much different a hundred years later. This definitely has to be what that 1925 sign was all about. You don't know that. I don't? No. You don't know that. Oh, I don't know that. Let me tell you what I do. I know 1925 was a great year for Uncle Carl. In fact, that's the year he bought a huge plot of land on the corner of Hollywood and Highland, making him the most popular guy in town. They not like us. They not like us. Carl! Welcome home! Come here, buddy! But this was a much different Hollywood. Well, this is Hollywood Vine, where the stars dine and wine. A much fancier and glitzier Hollywood where all the stars would hang out. Why is that? Well, because all of the studios were on this street. Radio stations and film studios occupied this entire street, making this street the biggest entertainment hub in the world. Not just the city, the world! And with Carl being the president of Universal Pictures, he had the grand plan to build a 900-seat theater and an office tower on this property. But due to the Great Depression, that didn't pan out. Houston, we have a problem. Instead, he developed a one-story stucco structure with a red tile roof that opened in 1932, dubbed the Lemley Building. Fair enough. That brings us to our second Easter egg for Carl Lemley, which is to the right of the Marilyn Monroe meet and greet. It's this stucco building with the red tile roof. Coincidence? I think not! 
I believe this is an homage to Carl Lemley's original idea of bringing a theater and office space to Hollywood and Vine. But in reality, the tenants were mostly cafes and diners that started from the 1940s that ran through the mid 80s. And at one point, the Hollywood Brown Derby briefly occupied this building after their previous location, a half block away, was destroyed in a fire. Tracking out the fire. And ironically enough, in 2008, the Lemley building also burned down in a fire. It was a total electrical fire. It's like the 4th of July, man. And since then, has become a parking lot. And this is my totally not overexposed shot on the 360 cam. Oh my god. You didn't hear that. But you can't miss this corner. There's a massive mural of Judy Garland, and you can see the Capitol Record Building from here. Also, a funny note: if you stand on this corner, you can find Carl Lemley's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's bonus information. And this one's even funnier: if you cross the street from the old Lemley Building, you're met with this Hollywood and Vine sign. This sign is definitely iconic. And right across the way from the Lemley Building at Universal Studios is a sign that reads the Hollywood and Dine. Jordan fades back. Swoosh and. That's the game! Nothing further, Your Honor. And the last Carl Lemley Easter egg is my favorite place to escape from all the madness inside the park. It's the Lemley Court. This area is dedicated to Carl Lemley, not only for his contribution in the film industry and the hundreds of films he produced, but this area is also to commemorate the 300 German Jews that he helped escape from Nazi Germany. From my family to yours, Mazel so that was the 10 second tour on Carl Lemley, creator, founder, and lineage of all things Universal Studios, and bringing the studios here at all in Hollywood. But his right hand man, Irving Thalberg, has his own monument right behind us. And it's no surprise with a placement that's a little bit of corporate synergy, it's just right of Carl Lemley. This is Boy Wonder. Who's that guy? Who are you? Yeah, but who is he? I never met him. I think it's time for another Mouse Vibes history moment. You see this guy right here? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's Irving J. Thalberg. And at just 18 years old, he moved west to California and became secretary for Carl Lemley, who was president of a then struggling Universal Pictures. Impressed with his movie making knowledge, Lemley made Thalberg the head of the studio at just 20 years old. Um, okay. I'm gonna need to see some identification. Starting with The Hunchback in Notre Dame, Thalberg turned the company's fortunes around. Men like Thalberg the model that they were instituting was that of Henry Ford. It was mass production. And at just 24 years old, he left Universal Pictures and took over MGM. And guided Ben-Hur another classic, from pending disaster to thundering success. Great success. This is probably my favorite Easter egg at Universal Studios Hollywood, the Thalberg Talent Agency. You can find it on this building right over here, which is another nod to an historical LA landmark, the Hollywood Pantages Theater. Good call. Both buildings have sculptures of goddesses that highlight the roof, and this metal lotus frame around it. This looks almost identical to the sculpture found at the Pantages Theater. And the next clue is the window to the left saying, West Coast casting office. There are actually two office windows for the actual Pantages Theater as well. I also love how non-petty Universal is for adding Irving Thalberg in here. Easily all of his most popular movies came after he left Universal and started MGM. But highlighting back the Thalberg Talent Agency, I think the biggest reason that you see Talent Agency over the Pantages Theater is because Thalberg was responsible for grooming the next new stars in the 20s with the likes of Lon Chaney, Joan Crawford, and Clark Gable. He also did the unthinkable in 1932 when he decided on a multi-star production of another Broadway play, The Grand Hotel. This feature had five major stars and the film went on to win the Oscars Best Picture in 1932. Producing the best picture. Maybe Irving Thalberg is the one who's really responsible for the super team and not LeBron James. But I love the little Easter egg of his, I guess, facade being a little bit of his characteristic, bringing in the Pantages Theater, which was like known for Broadway and musicals and stuff like that. But Irving Thalberg was like kind of known for bringing that forefront to movies so that's kind of an unknown easter egg i've never heard anyone do that shout out to boy wonder irving thalberg considered the architect of the studio system unfortunately irving thalberg passed away at just 37 years old at the height of his astounding career his death spurred the motion picture academy to originate in 1937 the irving thalberg award from time to time the board of governors of the academy of motion pictures arts and sciences decides to bestow the irving thalberg award upon a filmmaker whose body of work has been deemed Outstanding. Is this thing in focus? Do I sound good? Audio moving? Yep, all that's good. All right, that's going to wrap up our day at Universal Studios Hollywood, showing you secrets you've probably never heard of, and I need to think of a better title than that because that's not going to hit on YouTube. But those are some secrets that we showed you here at Universal Studios Hollywood, more particularly off Hollywood Boulevard. 
in the upper lot. But if you like this type of video, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps us grow. And we're going to come back with a ton more of these secret videos. So please let me know in the comments. I swear to God, this is the oldest one by far.